Hello from Israel. The past 24 hours have been crazy. Let's address it. Yesterday, Israel's defense minister, Yoav Gallant, was fired by the Netanyahu administration. This was followed by protests on the streets of Israel with people saying that Yoav Gallant was fired because he wanted to make so-called painful concessions in order to get the hostages back, and also because he did not support an exemption in the draft for Orthodox Jews. That happened on election day, and then overnight in Israel, it became clear that Trump was on track to win the U.S. election. And then Iran got triggered, or maybe they were planning an election day attack because Iranian proxy Hezbollah sent at least 10 rockets to Israel from Lebanon. A car was hit, but I hear otherwise nothing big. I got a bunch of notifications from my kids' teachers that they heard Iron Dome interceptions above, but that the school did not get an alarm because those interceptions, apparently they were very loud. They were from the nearby town. Don't worry, the kids are okay. Today, it's very clear that Trump has won the election and people here in Israel are wondering what does that mean for the war and what does that mean for getting back the hostages? Anyway, this is your democratic reminder that supporting Israel, which is the only democracy in the Middle East surrounded by genocidal Islamists that want to wipe Israel off the map and then move on over to America should not be a partisan issue. This used to be a given in the Democratic Party. And a side note here, maybe it wasn't the best idea for the Democratic Party to forego the primary process process and simply anoint a nominee uh, without being vetted through that process. The primary process is to the benefit of the party because it allows them to see who's popular, see who's got policies that resonate with the people. When you skip over that, you're taking a big chance. The primaries are supposed to help elevate the strongest candidate. Was she the strongest candidate in the Democratic Party? We'll never know. America is not a dictatorship. You can't just circumvent the process and then expect the voters to fall in line. Anyway, what's done is done. And now we're looking ahead to January, to the transfer of power, which makes me think of January 6th, which was a disgrace. But also now I'm wondering if it'll be awkward now for Harris, the vice president, to certify the election for Trump. These are crazy times we live in. Whomever you voted for, I hope that we can still come together as as a nation of Americans. I hope that these seven Americans that are still stuck in Gaza are still on people's minds. And I hope that people realize that anti-Semitism doesn't pay. I do expect to see some changes when it comes to the anti-Semitism festivals we've seen on college campuses. I'm very curious to see how Trump handles the conflict, to see if he's able to bring the hostages home, and to see if he's able to help bring this war to an end. Bye.